What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So let me ask you guys a question. Are you having a really hard time playing the Magicka Sorcerer right now? Because I know I am. This is the absolute worst class in the entire game. But don't worry guys, we have a very spicy build video for you today that actually makes the Magicka Sorcerer playable in PvP. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to my humble abode here in Cold Harbor and before we get into the bread and butter of this video a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat you guys are absolutely amazing if you want to help support the channel more on that at the end of the video and also down in the description below. And apologies for the mediocre clips at the beginning of the video. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Most of the clips I got were so elongated out, like over seven and eight minutes worth of time. It didn't make sense to splice everything together and speed up clips and slow it down. It just looked janky and I really wasn't impressed with the content. Quite frankly, I'm not even impressed with the clips at the beginning because I, besides the very first clip, the very first clip could have been a lot better if people didn't decide to cloak out and run away. But, I mean, it is what it is. The Magicka Sorcerer of this class is just the absolute worst it's ever been. And that's due to a lot of power creep. And then just nerf, 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 nerf to the class without really any buffs. What it needs is just a blanket buff to frags in general. Like an in increase in frag damage. And also, in my personal opinion, Vicious Curse needs a tick harder on the second tick. I mean... Anyway, that's not what this is about, my rant about Magic of Sorcerer, because it's a shame, because I do have 3,000 hours on my Magic of Sorcerer on console, so, I mean, it is what it is. So, with the elongated intro out of the way, it's kind of setting realistic expectations to what the Sork is going to be like, I do have two different setups, um, two kind of different play styles. The reason I'm not running wards on my Magic of Sorcerer is because it kind of gimps you. You're forced into running Crafty Alphique, which is a terrible damage, or a terrible set for damage. And you could run Bright Throats Boast with a you know, Drinky Poos, or you could run Ancient Grace, you know, with a two piece max stats, you know, whatever. You're going to be seeing around 50k max magic, but that embraces such a weird play style to where you're always streaking, streaking, roll dodging, streaking, streaking, ward, streak, ward, streak, wards, roll dodge. It just sucks, okay? You know me, guys. I like the DK. I, I like to be able to face tank with people. So, what I did on this build, I just made it to where literally every single ability on your bar pretty much heals you. So, it's it's like instead of death by a thousand cuts, it's like health by not a thousand cuts. Great analogy, but you guys get it. So, <laughs> without further ado, let's get into it. So, character sheets. Uh, the best race for this is going to be Breton. I'm high elf. So, uh, stat sheet is as follows. Kind of buff up a little bit just so you guys have a general idea of what to expect on your back bar. Uh, sitting at 27.5k spell resist, at 24k physical resist on your front bar. Uh, you have approximately, I think it's 25% crit, something like that. Yes, 
Um, I will go over an alternate ability. If you don't want to run Flappy Bird, you guys know there's a Flappy Bird involved. And uh, ironically enough, um, it's actually not too bad. Uh, I've been an advocate of not using Flappy Bird just because I, the Flappy Bird's kind of OP in a group setting with Sorcerer, I'm not going to lie to you. But um, it's actually a pretty decent open world if you know how to use it. And the critical resist is really high because even though impen is a terrible trait to have on your armor pieces, you have to tank up somehow and having a high health pool with high critical resist. I mean, I, I guess it is what it is. You don't, you still have enough stamina to roll dodge quite a bit, so I'm not really too much worried about that. Now, if you want to go the roly poly oly route, you know, by all means, go for it. Uh, run the astronaut Mundus, uh, just whatever is comfortable with your sustain. Um, with our sustain right now with the potion pops and also continuous attack um, we will be getting uh, over a 2k a magic recovery which is well beyond what you need for this build um, you could possibly if you do run breton put vampire on this build and get away with this amount of recovery as long as you're using dark conversion when you're supposed to which we'll get into in just a minute okay so when it comes to the setups uh, this is what i just found work best for me again builds can be altered you can do whatever you want with it guys I'm using Burning Spellweave because we are not running wards. Burning Spellweave gives you 500 weapon of spell damage and that when it procs on your front bar, it can go, you can swap to your back bar, you're not going to lose that buff. So you constantly have this 500 weapon of spell damage bolstering your damage, but also your healing. It's very important to be capped off on this build. If you run Flappy Bird, that's good. You have a burst seal to get you out of execute range, but if you run the rapid regeneration combo with Vigor, you're not going to have any sort of burst seal on this build. So if you want to go that route, which I will explain, I highly, highly suggest you run this because this does help your heals out as well. Now, uh, this is going to be sharpened on our front bar. You can run whatever enchantment you want on the front bar. I always suggest shock or you run double dot poisons. Back bar is going to be Mars Restoration Staff or Mars Sword and Board or Mars Ice Staff. Does not matter. Make sure it's defending. The reason I like Mars Bomb is because it used to be really OP and then it was kind of OP and now it's a very balanced set. If you guys are unfamiliar with uh, what Mars Bomb actually does in its current state. So whenever a negative effect falls off, you get healed for approximately 900 in serial, even though tooltip only says 1800. And then uh, every 15 seconds, you can completely reset all the buffs and uh, all the debuffs on yourself. It purges them, and each for each effect purge, you get healed for 900 per effect, right? So it's a nice little burst seal if you know how to time it correctly. And as long as you're against anywhere between four to seven people, this amount of healing is really, really good because you're constantly having effects fall off like every second. So you're constantly having a high uptime on this heal. So when you start getting into less people than that, like in 1v1s, this set is completely useless. Like 1v1s, this is dog crap of a set. Or if you get above like eight or nine people, the amount of incoming damage isn't really offset by the healing. So there is a sweet spot for this set to work properly. And that's anywhere between four to six people, you know, maybe three to five, you know, something like that. So uh, I always run defending on the back bar on this one. You don't necessarily need powered, but again, it doesn't matter what your weapon type is on the back bar. Everything's going to function correctly. All right. So uh, monster set running engine guardian. Engine guardian is going to tank you up just because engine guardian tanks everything. It tanks meteors, it tanks in caps, it tanks blows. So unless someone's tab targeting you, which I mean, let's be real, most potatoes aren't. Uh, this is actually going to take a lot of hits for you. And also, it doesn't matter what beam of the engine guardian that you get doesn't matter if it's health that's really good you need heals on this build it doesn't matter if it's magica it doesn't matter if it's stamina you can always dark conversion all that stamina over to magic if you need it plus health so this is all around the best monster set for the magic sorcerer you can run you know, whatever i guess it, i mean it's your build but i've tried literally every single monster set in the game and this is what's worked best for me now when it comes to armor weights you have five light one medium one heavy all right just so you can get the most crit chance possible and also a lot of spell and physical penetration as well as cost reduction um uh, you always want your heavy to be uh your chest to be heavy reinforced i got a medium helmet um everything's in pen now you can get away with a few well fitted um i just don't have the transmute stones otherwise i'll probably go well fitted uh, the rings is Mars Bomb, so I have one spell damage, one magic recovery, and then Sea Serpent's Coils are Mythic. This is probably best in slot uh, on most classes, especially on the Magic Sorcerer, because you have Streak to offset this snare, as well as a lot of roll dodging. So, and this is a free 15% damage. You get Major Courage, which is going to increase your weapon and spell damage by what Burning Spell we does by approximately 500, okay? And then you're also going to get Major Berserk. And if you add all that together, that's about 15% raw damage at the cost of a 40% snare, which you're a magic sorcerer, you have streak, it don't matter. 
All right, welcome to the skill section. So I'm going to go over two different variants for this one. I've played tests of both, but Flappy Bird is by far the most consistent. If you like living life on the edge and you really, really like clenching your butthole the entire time, I do have a secondary setup, which is a really fun to play, but you can get caught with your pants down really quick if you're not careful. So we're running frags, curse, naturally. Flappy Bird, unfortunately, you have to double bar this, but the heal is astronomical. We just buffed up, I think it's like 13K on tooltip. Plus, we're not getting the uh, 500 weapon spell damage from Burning Spell Weave. Plus, we're not getting the 500 weapon spell damage from Major Courage from our Sea Serpent's uh, Mythic item. So, whatever our uh, spell damage is right now, whatever. I just multiply this by like a thousand and then you add like another 500 to it with a continuous attack. So the heal on this guy is actually really, really beefy. I think this goes over a 16k tooltip and then when it crits, it's fantastic. And the good thing about having Flappy Bird is you don't have to waste a global cooldown swapping to your back bar. If you want to keep the keep up the pressure, you can just spam the heal on your front bar. Pretty much the heal is exactly the same. So it's very nice having a little burst heal on your front bar as well. Keep up the pressure. Now I'm running Crushing Shock. You could run Ellie Weapon, I think in one of the clips I was running Ellie Weapon, but since I'm a controller player, I often find that when I go to do my streak 180, like lie attack, whatever, frag combo, I tend to miss my lie attack on the whip around. So I miss out on a lot of bursts. I do miss out on a lot of kills uh, with that lie attack missing if you run Elemental Weapon. Whereas if you run Crushing Shock, yeah, you do do a little bit less damage, but it's actually more consistent on controller. And also, since we're running Critical Surge, Crushing Shock, one out of three of these is going to crit. So what that means is you're actually going to heal because of Critical Surge. We'll go over that here in just a moment. And then Streak is our Gap Closer slash CC slash Get the Hell Out button. And then last but not least on our front bar is Power Overload. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Your class is buns until you pop Overload. Overload really isn't really isn't even that good, to be honest with you. Um, this is the only way you're really going to kill people. You can try to drop a Meatball and kill maybe one person but what are you going to do about the other five or six chasing you and there's no way you're in kite them around so you get another meteor you can drop frank the atro but he's just very unreliable i mean he he, he punches the ground and he zap zaps but he can't even move you know what i mean so really you can try dawn breaker i uh, do some cheeky plays with that but i do think power overload is just a better ultimate for the sorcerer because uh, you can actually burst people like any time you can catch people off guard with this just don't forget to like toggle it back off when you're not going in for your burst, when you're going for your back bar, for example, because I do find myself wasting a lot of my ultimate being on my back bar lie attacking with overload, and there's really no need for that. So back bar is uh, going to be dark conversion, uh, greatest utility uh, skill that the magic sorcerer has. Again, if you're running Flappy Bird, you have to slot it. Resolving Vigor, this is going to give you a hefty healing over time effect, as well as minor resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistances by 3k. And then we're running Boundless Storm with Critical Surge. Uh, this is really good because a Critical Surge, any crit that you get is going to heal you for, it says 3,700 here on tooltip, uh, which means it's going to be like a 1,900, you know, whatever heals or 1,700, you know, whatever math hard, right? In Cyrodiil, uh, which is really nice. This is a heal crits from anything. It could be little baby dick crit, tip, baby dick crit hits. There we go. Say that five times faster. From Boundless Storm, they'll, they'll heal you. Um, you use Crushing Shock, you get three instances of damage. More than likely, one of these is going to crit, which is going to heal you. Streak, you want to streak through a bunch of people, it's going to heal you. And so there's a lot of kind of going into this. All your lie attacks, if it crits, it's going to heal you. So there's a lot of utility actually comes from Critical Surge as well. So it's a really, really nice ability to have. Now on your back bar, you can make this whatever. You can put on Frank if you want to. If you're running Sword and Board, definitely go Spell Wall because this is very, very powerful. And then you can either go Lights Champion or uh, whatever the other morph is. I go with Lights Champion because it does give you a major force. And this is um, a, a really good bursting tool in case you just need to get enough healing off just to line up a burst. So you can pop this, pop to your front bar, and hopefully you can get a, a, a frag to crit or a haunting curse to crit because you're going to get 20% extra crit damage from that. So it's entirely up to you how you want to play it. The back bar... Um, is is what it is i can't see me changing anything on this ever um, unless it's gonna be flappy bird so we will go into what other skills you can change so if you don't want to run flappy bird you want to get a little bit more damage you can go down here to the fighter's guild skill line and put on camouflage under uh, and this is really good because it does give you an extra 10 percent crit on your front bar bolstering your critical chance up to 37 percent i believe yeah 37.4 percent okay 
And then also when you're flanking an enemy, it gives you a minor berserk for four seconds, which if you're streaking, if you're really doing anything in the game, actually, it's you're going you're going to be quote unquote flanking the enemy. So you're gonna have minor berserk up a lot of time, increasing your damage of five percent. Now on the back bar, what you want to do. What I have found out is that you want to run a restoration staff. Now, if you are going to run this way, you pretty much have to have a restoration staff on your back bar. I mean, there's just no, no way around it because quite frankly, you're going to need lights champion or the other morph to pull you out of execute range because once you get down into execute range, there is no burst heal. You are up shit creek without a paddle, my friend. The only burst heal you're going to have is a tri stat potion, which is what I recommend on this build. And at all times, you need to be proactive not reactive you need to have rapid regen and bigger up pretty much all the time as if you're applying wards okay instead of doing harden ward and then dampen ward or whatever it's called you need to be doing like rapid regen and bigger just to make sure your healing is capped off and your health is kept kept up as high as you can possibly get it now if you do want to run this route notice that our health did drop because flappy bird due to our passes gives us a little bit more health now if you want to run it this way i will suggest that you take some points out of magic and put them into health until you're up to 30k all right because again once you get down into execute range you are screwed so please save a well-timed potion so you don't have all your hots up that's the only way you're going to get out of it and if all all else fails you need to pop lights champion okay Okay, so you made it this far in the video to the champion point section. I know you guys aren't skipping around on the timestamps, are you? I, I know you'd never do that, right? So um, the two I'm always going to go with is Deadly Aim and Master at Arms. Um, you can make an argument to where you can go with Force of Nature, <clears throat> excuse me, by running a, uh, a charge trait on your front bar. I found this to be underwhelming unless you're in duels. It's really hard to you know, have this you know, effective on you know, one person or whatever. So I always go for of uh, champion points that's going to you know just affect my overall ability you know not just really niche scenario so we're going with deadly aim we're going to master at arms for this one and then for one of your defensive cps you're going to go ironclad um, ironclad is going to reduce uh, you know all your drag damage by six percent and so instead of going into dual street buff because this is primarily to use to like reduce a lot of damage over time effects damage over time effects really isn't a thing anymore i mean it's all burst so you could argue this point but um, since this is a, a Healy Boy build, you have wards. I think it's better to go focus mending because all the mitigation passives have been nerfed. Meanwhile, the healing passives uh, have been left unchanged. So stat wise, I think it's more advantageous to go with focus mending here. Now we go over into Red Tree. Uh, I pretty much always run the exact same thing. I'm running Survival Instincts, and then I'm also running the Trifecta of Pain's Refuge, Sustained by Suffering, and also Relentlessness. Okay. Uh, when it comes to green tree, it really don't matter, guys. J just have your gifted rider passives, have your war mount passives. I uh, put on Steve's blessing with liquid efficiency if you're using you know expensive potions. And uh, that about does it for the build, guys. I think I went over pretty much everything besides the food. I'm doing you know bewitch sugar skulls. You can run whatever food you want. I just found that having a very low stamina pool is uh, doesn't suit my playstyle. Even though the recovery would be really good from smoked bear haunch. I just personally don't really care about the recovery. I think having max stats is just way better just so you can get away with more roll dodge and you know, yada yada like that. But um, that pretty much does it for the the build video, guys. Thank you very much. Want to be my dog for... <laughs> God, man. I tried to make it through the video. <laughs> I knew he was over here banking me, but... Oh man, that sucks. I think that both does it for the build video, guys. And again, if you want to help support the channel, I would really appreciate a like and sub, like for real, for real. One of the best ways to support the channel. But if you want to go a little bit further, I actually do have links to uh, uh, my Patreon and uh, YouTube memberships and all that stuff down in the Discord. So if you guys are interested in that, you know, please go take a look. And with all that being said, guys, this has been Horcrux. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.